Praise the Lord. Let's close our eyes for prayer. Our Father, we thank you for our coming together once again. Thank you for what we've been learning from the book of Jonah. Thank you because of the importance and the centrality of the Great Commission. We're praying, O oh Lord, that you make every one of us workers, leaders, believers in the congregation to be committed to this Great Commission in Jesus' name. The single life we have to live. We pray, O oh Lord, it will matter for the kingdom of God. Help us that we will be doers of the word and not hearers only. In Jesus' name, we pray. We've been going through the book of Jonah. And I need to appeal to you and plead with you that these series of studies we've been having on the Great Commission and the privilege of preaching the gospel will not just be that we come and hear, but according to the instruction, the exhortation, the admonition of the scriptures, will be doers of the word. In James chapter 1, verse 22, James 1, 22, but be doers of the word, not hearers only. We've been hearing about evangelism in most of our Thursday meetings, and we hear when we come for leaders and workers meetings like this, and it uh, befits us that will join obedience to our hearing. In Romans chapter 2, verse 13, Romans 2, verse 13, for not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. Once again, it's an emphasis that it's not enough that we hear, we must do, we must keep, we must obey. In fact, the blessing rests on the people that do obey the word of the Lord. We make a practice of what we're hearing. In Luke chapter 11, verse 28, Luke 11 28 but he said ye rather blessed are they that hear the word of god and keep it blessed are they that hear the word of god and obey that word of god we come to jonah chapter 3 today and we're now in verses 2 3 and 4 jonah chapter 3 verses 2 3 and 4 the title of the message tonight is commitment to the great commission in great cities commitment to the great commission in great cities arise go unto Nineveh that great city and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee so Jonah arose and he went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord now Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days journey and Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey and he cried and said yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown here we find the commitment of Jonah to the great commission in these great cities big cities have peculiarities and Nineveh was no exception the sins of the Ninevites were great and God didn't want them to perish without a chance of hearing his word and knowing the way to escape from judgment that's why he's been after Jonah and that's why it's after us that in the great cities of the world that we live in or that we know about will reach out to these great cities and preach the gospel to the inhabitants of those great cities the three points we have today are rather very simple number one the great city number two the great commission number three the great commitment number one the great city it's very interesting as we refer to Nineveh that God himself referred to Nineveh as that great city three times. Look at chapter 1 verse 2. Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city. And then come to chapter 3. In chapter 3 in verse 2. Arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city. So you find God himself referring to Nineveh as the great city. So Jonah arose and he went unto Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days journey. As uh, you look at uh, Nineveh in the ancient time, 
you'll find that Nineveh had existed for a very long time. From the very beginning of time, uh, you open your Bible to the first book of the Bible in Genesis chapter 10. And then you find the first reference to this same um, ancient city, the great city that we're referring to. Um, Genesis chapter 10, verse, let me read from verse 9. And he was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Wherefore, it is said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord, and the beginning of his kingdom was Babel, and Erek, and Akkad, and Kalne, in the land of Shinar. Here's the verse we're looking for. Out of that land went forth Asher, and builded Nineveh, and the city of Rehoboth, and Kala. And so you find in verse 11 of Genesis chapter 10, the mention of Nineveh, which means that Nineveh actually was a very ancient city. And by the time of Jonah, it had become a very great city. History tells us from the discoveries of archaeology that Nineveh in the immediate vicinity, the central part of that city was one mile by two and a half miles and then while the metropolitan uh, area was uh, over 60 miles in circumference that is they built a wall around Nineveh and the height of the wall was about 100 feet and then all around the wall if you are just to journey around the perimeter you have 60 miles actually you'll understand then at such a time like that so many years ago it was a very great city and they knew that because they erected towers towers were the places where the watchmen will stand and they'll be looking outside so that if the enemy was coming they'll be able to see the marching of the enemy army and you know how many towers they had they had 1500 towers all around the 60 miles perimeter and each of the towers 200 feet high indeed therefore it was an exceeding great city exceedingly great city and so come back to Jonah, and then you find the coming of the lord in chapter 4 verse 11 Jonah, chapter 4 verse 11 and should i not spare nineveh that great city do you see that now chapter one that great city chapter three that great city and then chapter four now that great city wherein are more than six score thousand persons that cannot discern between their right hand and their left hand and also much cattle how do you understand the phrase that cannot discern that cannot distinguish that cannot tell or know the difference between the right hand and the left hand that means the babies the children that is to have children there that have not come to the age of recognizing between the left and the right 120,000 and then theologians have uh, uh, compiled it for us they have uh, calculated it for us that if you have 120,000 children at uh, the average of five people within a family you have a population of at least 600,000 people 600,000 people and you must understand there were very very few cities in the ancient world that were very much uh, that were great in population like that that's why it was a very great city and now Jonah let's come back to Jonah Jonah was sent there to that great city and instead of going to Nineveh he went the other way you know why because he didn't see Nineveh as God saw Nineveh number one he looked at Nineveh nationally instead of individually that's the problem we have when you look at a city and you look at that city as an entity as an ethnic group and you are not looking at the individuals as never dying souls we have difficulty reaching out to them number two Jonah looked at Nineveh historically instead of prophetically. He looked at the past, what they had done, their history, instead of looking at the future and looking at them as the power of the gospel, the power of the preaching of the word, and the grace of God will make them to be. When you look at people historically and you are not looking at them prophetically, you are going to have a problem because you are not looking at the future, at what the Lord will do and what the Lord will accomplish even as you preach the gospel unto them. We have mentioned this uh, Nineveh as uh, a great city, a big city. Do you know that the Lord is still concerned 
for the big cities of our world today. You will find this concern expressed as the Lord himself looked over Jerusalem, a big city at that time as well. In Luke chapter 19, Luke chapter 19, verses 41 and 42, it says, And when he was come near, he beheld the city, and he wept over it. Oh, for the tears of compassion again from the people that follow Christ, from Christians that have a mind of Christ, that they will look at their cities, look at the crimes in their city, the corruption in their city, the conflicts in their city, and look at every evil thing in their city, and look at all the conflicts of the ethnic groups and everything happening. Look at the street boys and street girls. Look at the poverty in the city, the degradation in the city, the sin in the city, and look at the judgment coming upon the city if they do not have the gospel and they will have the mind of christ the compassion of christ the heart of christ and weep over the city weep in prayer and weep as we are sowing the seed of the gospel and weep as we are having compassion that the people of the city will not perish saying in verse 42 if thou art known even thou art at least this in this thy day the things which belong unto thy peace but now they are hid from thine eyes is that peculiar to jerusalem is that peculiar to nineveh that the good of the city the good of the people is hidden from their eyes no not at all as you look at the rush up and down in the big cities of the world as you look at the skyscrapers in the big cities of the world as you look at the political involvement in the big cities of the world as you look at the things that occupy the minds of the people of the world in the big cities of the world as you look at how the life is rushing on in the big cities of the world you'll be forced to say with the lord jesus christ that the good of the people in the cities of the world they are hidden away from them that's why it's very urgent for us to take the gospel unto them to go like paul the apostle and understand that god still has compassion for the big cities and to do anything everything we can do so that will preach the gospel in the big cities of the world starting from our own city in acts of the apostles chapter 18 acts chapter 18 verse 9 then spake the lord to paul in the night in the night by a vision be not afraid but speak hold not thy peace for i am with thee and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee for i have much people where in this city god has always been concerned for the cities and we must be concerned for the city as well and he continues three years and six months teaching the word of god among them that's in verse 11 and so we will learn that uh, there are big cities in the world mega cities we call them now uh, the people who are studying uh, you know the inhabitants of the world and the cities and the villages of the world they tell us now that there are so many cities with more than 10 million in population and many with more, more than 1 million in population in africa in asia in, in the americas and in europe you find them all scattered everywhere and there is much we need to do in the preaching of the gospel in those big cities of the world we must have compassion on the sinners that are living there we must look at them with the eyes of jesus christ think about the various aspects and the various people living in those cities are you are you thinking about the hospitals are you thinking about the prisons are you thinking about the street boys and the street girls are you thinking about the people with hiv are you thinking about the prostitution are you thinking about the cinema houses are you thinking about the many many groups categories of people that are just wandering up and down in the big cities of the world without salvation think about them have compassion on them number two the great commission the great commission in jonah chapter 3 reading from verse 2 again arise go unto nineveh that great city and preach unto it the preaching that i bid thee so jonah arose and went unto nineveh according to the word of the lord now nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days journey and jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey and he cried and said yet forty days and nineveh shall be overthrown the great commission uh, they did not said unto jonah arise go preach those three words if you are going to obey the great commission 
you cannot sit down you cannot fold your hand you cannot remain where you are you cannot say let the sinners come no let the believers go to the sinners where they are on the street in the highway in the hedges anywhere you can find them go and preach the gospel unto them and that's the important watch in the great commission going taking the gospel taking the word of life unto the people that are perishing in mark chapter 16 mark chapter 16 reading from verse 15 and he said unto them go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature go that is you cannot just stay there you have something precious in your hand and you need to go and take it to the people that are dying because of the lack of it in verse 20 and they went forth and preached everywhere the lord walking with them and confirming the word was signs following many people are expecting that the lord will walk miracles through them they the miracles will not come until you go forth they went forth and they preached everywhere and as they were going then the lord was following after them the lord walking with them was signs following that's a testimony we have heard from people and they have said when we were just you know here all together sinking in soaking in receiving the gospel we didn't know that we had such gifts and such power and such manifestation of the spirit of god testimonies are coming back from the people that have gone out the moment we stepped out and we started preaching the gospel we saw that a lot had been deposited within us the lord walking with us now many signs and wonders are taking place too in acts of the apostles chapter 8 acts chapter 8 reading from verse 5 it says and then when philip went down to the city the city again it was a city a city of ignorance a city of superstition a city of crime a city of people that do not know a right righteousness from a righteousness a city of people that they wanted to worship god samaria they did not know how to worship god and he went down to the city of samaria and he preached christ unto them what was the result in verse 8 there was great joy where in that city when you preach the gospel to you you reach out to the cities and you preach to them and you're, you're not just saying in the locality of the church and then telling people the gospel the people that have had a hundred times they have had 200 times why does anybody have any right to hear two times 20 times 200 times when there are people outside there on the street that have not heard once that was the commitment of paul the apostle when he said in romans chapter 15 romans chapter 15 verses 20 and 21 it says yea so have i strived to preach the gospel not where christ was named lest i should build upon another man's foundation when you go into the inner part of the cities when you go to the street corners and to the highways when you go to the bus stops and you go to the marketplaces then you will see people that are ignorant of the gospel the people that have never known the people that have never had maybe they have heard about god but they don't know god maybe they have heard about christ but they do not know christ it's when you go to the places where they are that you'll be able to find them then you'll not be building on other people's foundation where christ has not been named in verse 21 but as it is written to whom he was not spoken of they shall see and they shall they that have not heard shall understand it is when the people of god when they go out that's when that will be done by the way have you noticed the message of um, the message of jonah please come back jonah chapter 3 jonah chapter 3 reading from verse 4 jonah began to enter into into the city a day's journey and he cried and said yet 40 days and nineveh shall be overthrown there are two things i want to uh, point out there number one how is it that the message of judgment caught them so quickly because in the uh, coming verses you read that uh, those people they announced that there should be a fasting and repentance and they turned unto the lord well it's because they had a past experience look at isaiah isaiah chapter 37 in isaiah chapter 37 reading from verse 21 and verse 22 then i saw the son of amos sent unto Ezekiah, saying thus says the lord god of israel whereas thou hast prayed to me against sinakerub king of assyria 
this is the word of the Lord uh, that the word uh, the Lord has spoken concerning him. The virgin, the daughter of Zion, has despised thee and laughed thee to scorn. The daughter of Jerusalem has shaken her head at thee. As uh, you know, he was this king of uh, Assyria, and he came to them, and then he he was threatening them. If you read the whole chapter, but now in verse thirty-six of that same chapter, then the angel of the Lord went forth and he smote in the camp of the Assyrians a hundred and four score and five thousand one eighty five thousand just one single angel at a single blow and when they rose up early in the morning behold they were all dead corpses in verse 37 and Sennacherib king of Assyria departed and went and returned and dwelt at where Nineveh. Those people of Nineveh, they knew that this God, when he wants to bring judgment, he doesn't need an army. Just one angel will finish 185,000 in one night. And when Jonah said, another one is coming, 40 days, Nineveh shall be overthrown and destroyed. They remember the history, what I read to you now. And then they knew that that must be the time for them to repent. The second thing I need to point out, the preaching of judgment is part of the Great Commission. It's part of the content of the gospel, the content of the evangelistic message. You know, there are people that just uh, preach, and uh, when they preach, it's, Jesus loves you. If you come to Christ, He will solve all your problems, remove all your calamities. That's, uh, and that's a watered down gospel. Look at Acts chapter 24. Acts chapter 24, reading from verse 24. And after certain days, when Felix came with his wife, uh, Drusilla, which was a Jewess, he sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Christ and as a reason of righteousness and temperance and judgment to come, Felix trembled. You see, uh, Paul was preaching the gospel to him. He was telling him, uh, you need to repent. Why do you need to repent? Because judgment is coming. And he so described the judgment. He so painted a picture that even Felix began to tremble. And Paul the apostle said, knowing the judgment of God, we persuade men. It's part of the preaching of the gospel. It's part of the content of the evangelistic message. Come back to Jonah. Jonah was told, arise, go and preach and Jonah arose and he went he knew this the neglect of the great commission was the main and the only reason for God's controversy with him and now he brought the great commission to the very center of the activities of his life and then that has a message for the believer it is when you bring the great commission to the center of the activities of your life that your life will please the lord it has a message for the church as well the church must bring the great commission to the activities to the center of the activities of the church then will the church be in the will of god the center of the will of God. Point number three now is the great commitment. The great commitment. Jonah chapter three. I'm reading from verse two again. Arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. So Jonah arose, and he went unto Nineveh according to the watch of the Lord. Unto now Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days' journey. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey. And he cried and he said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Come back to verse 3. Jonah arose and he went unto Nineveh, listen to this, according to the word of the Lord. That's the commitment. According to the word of the Lord. Please notice six things there. Number one, he went because he was told he went because he was told number two he went where he was told go to Nineveh and to Nineveh he went number three he went when he was told this is the time to do it arise now the people are perishing their days are numbered go now unto them preach the preaching that i gave you before he went when he was told number four he went as he was told according to the word of the lord as he was told number five he went to do the thing 
he was told. He didn't go there to get sidetracked and do another thing. He went to do the thing. He was told. Number six, he went to do it in the way he was told. Isn't that a great message for us? That as we go on, as we're preaching the gospel, we'll obey the word of the Lord. Number one, we'll do it because we're told. Number two, we'll do it where we're told. Number three, when we're told. Number four, as we're told. Number five, to do the thing we're told to do. And number six, in the way we're told to do it. In fact, that is the way it was with all the people that the Lord gave a commission to. In Deuteronomy chapter 18. Deuteronomy chapter 18. I'm reading there from verse 18. Deuteronomy chapter 18. Reading from verse 18. And you will see the importance of doing it according to the word of the Lord. As the Lord has commanded. Not modifying the method. Not modifying the mandate. Not modifying the message. 18, 18. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee and will put my words in his mouth and he shall speak unto them all that i shall command him all that i shall command him that's what he will speak unto them he will not modify the message he will not modify the mandate he will not modify the ministry that the lord had committed into his son evangelize and edify bring people into the kingdom and when they come into the kingdom develop them teaching them all things whatsoever i have commanded you in jeremiah chapter 1 verse 7 jeremiah 1 7 but the lord said unto me say not i am a child for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee. Listen to this. And whatsoever, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Uh, you, you find the faithfulness of those worthies of old. That as the Lord commanded them, that's exactly how they did it in Titus chapter 1. Titus chapter 1, verse 9. Titus 1, 9. Holding forth, holding fast the faithful word as he has been taught and you see these people of old they were very very faithful and paul was telling titus the people you are going to put in position the people you are going to put over the churches will be the people that have learned the word they are teachable they have been taught the word of the lord and they are holding fast the faithful word as they have been taught that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gain says in fact uh, do, do we have any choice and uh, shouldn't we just declare the word as the lord himself has given the word unto us if we're following after the lord jesus christ that's what we must do because when he came to this world the father gave him the message and when he came to the world he didn't modify the message or the mission or anything the lord had commanded him to do in john chapter 12 john chapter 12 verse 50 and i know that his commandment is life everlasting whatsoever i speak therefore even as the father said unto me so i speak if the lord jesus christ will not change the words of the father don't we know then is a, is a prerequisite is a condition of faithfulness that the word the lord has given us we're not going to change it there will be this great commitment to the great commission in the great cities of the world such must be our commitment that you'll take the word of the lord and you'll go because you are told to go and you will go where you are told to go you'll go when you are told to go and then as you have been told to do the thing you have been told to do in the way you have been commanded to do it and as we do it obeying the great commission many through us will come to know the lord in jesus name let's rise up and talk to the lord in prayer that god will use you and use me that in this city and in the great cities of the world the lord will use all of us to preach the gospel don't modify it don't change it don't dilute it even the aspect of the judgment to come that is part of the preaching of the gospel let the people know there is life after death let the people know there's a reckoning day let the people know we're going to stand before the great judge let the people know there's a wise throne judgment let the people know that life is not forever and at the end of life we're going to give an account for what we have done and the only way we can escape the judgment of god is to repent of sin and receive jesus christ as our lord and savior